Hello everyone. And welcome to my shop. Hello everyone. Welcome to my shop. And my guest, Miss Abby. We're uh dog sitting for my daughter and son-in-law as they take the my grandsons to Disney World <clears throat> so Abby just comes to hang out with me today today we're going to do some work on the uh, the GMC I've been running it a lot lately and uh, I want to make it just run a little bit better while I'm working on the Chevy so stay tuned Uh, this is the 49 GMC. Uh, it's got the 69 350 engine in it, and it's got the uh, Edelbrock uh, 1406 uh, four barrel carburetor, 600 CFM, uh, bolted to a uh, Edelbrock Performer uh, split plane manifold, intake manifold. Uh, it runs great. Uh, the only problem I'm experiencing now that I'm uh, driving it regular is, uh, is that uh, on hot restarts, I've got, uh, it's, hard, it's harder to start when it's hot, and it takes it longer than I like for the idle to uh, even out once I've restarted it hot. Uh, research indicates that it may be that the, uh, uh, the, the heat from the engine causing the fuel to boil, to boil in the uh, float bowls, which then allows it to boil in, uh, to uh, boil into the intake, uh, into the venturis down into the intake, which is making the uh, mixture far too rich. Uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, my research indicated that Edelbrock makes a uh, a, an insulator that can go between the carburetor and the intake manifold and it's made out of a non uh, heat conductive material and I'm going to install this to see if that'll uh, clear up the problem or really not a problem I mean I, I'm working around it but to see if it can make it better on hot restart uh, the kit, it's a uh, 9266 part number which is for the uh, uh, dual plane intake manifolds because you can see it's got the center uh, gasket part to keep the uh, to keep both the primary and secondary uh, venturi separated and it also comes with larger uh, longer uh, studs for the carburetor to make up for that distance now I've got long studs in this now but uh, I'm gonna hopefully try these I think they're too long the ones I've got so anyway let's get to it studs are that's back when I had the I used the same studs that was on the uh, the uh, Wien manifold I ran that had an adapter plus the carburetor and I needed studs that long I no longer need studs that long uh, even though I'm not planning on pulling this carburetor as much 
make it easier to remove and replace. You know, sometimes if those uh, washers don't want to come out, they'll lift off at the uh, I'll bring the carburetor up. Now this one's got a little spring tension on it from the throttle uh, adapter that holds the throttle uh, cables and the uh, kick down cables. So they had to use a little bit more ratchet on it. Now no gaskets came with that adapter, but it's a soft type material, so I'm going to assume that it doesn't need gaskets or doesn't utilize gaskets. That's uh, not going to come off. I'll come off with the carburetor also. Dog sitting our uh, my daughter and son-in-law's basset hound. And she uh, she likes to hang with me out here in the shop more so than my own dogs. Isn't that something? Okay. All right. So we got a plate here. We're gonna make clearance. Okay. All right. There we go. Now. Here's the original ga the gasket I put on there. I didn't. Uh, let's see. It shouldn't uh, leave any residue. I think I'm going. I am going to replace it with studs. I can reuse that gasket if I so desire. Size threads in the, in the carburetor. Uh, Take that to manifold stud, a coarse thread, and a fine thread. The coarse thread goes into the uh, manifold, the fine threads for the uh, bolt, uh, the nut for the carburetor. And uh, they don't have to be overly tightened. I like to tighten them just a hair, give them a little cinch to, uh, so that way if you are taking the carburetor on or off, you can. Uh, Stud won't come out with enough. Okay. into the manifold. So making sure that, so that surface is good and clean from when I cleaned it up. I installed that manifold uh, last fall, I guess. I had a vacuum leak on the, uh, when I got the engine, I bought it used. Uh, when I bought it, it came with a wind uh, single plane manifold, and it had a vacuum leak back here at the runners at uh, uh, six and that, uh, five and seven. So, no, that was six and eight. I work on Fords too, so the number is a little different. But anyway, all right. So what I'm gonna do is just put a little cinch on them bolts, just a little. See, this is a dual plane. It actually separates the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the cylinders into four two banks, and this 
has the centerpiece here too. Now I don't know about that jutting out there in the middle. It doesn't really indicate the top or bottom. Looks the same on both sides. So we'll do that. Operator back on. Now it raises it just a hair, but that's not going to interfere with anything I've done. And that's okay. Now I'm going to have to. Alright, that clearance is just about to right. so get this washer on. Let me see. Slightly lift the carburetor and get that wash on. Right now I'm just hand tightening them. You don't want to go in this order that I'm going to do your tight, your final tightening. Tightening up. Do a crisscross pattern. We are dealing with aluminum on aluminum. I don't have a half a mile of stud hanging above here. You can see it. So these are determined by that approximately the correct uh, size. Now let's get the ratchet. I like to do this back one first because it's got the linkage. Now, I don't go real, I don't go gorilla tight yet. Oh, it makes it so much better to get that. Even though it has a deep well socket, it's so much easier. method I use on a long loop is I go, I choke up on the ratchet here and uh, however much my wrist can do. Okay. I mean it's a lot of feel. I'm sure there's a torque spec somewhere for it. With me, I go by feel more so. Of course, the worst thing you can do is uh, have a problem where you'll uh, make sure that you're still where you're supposed to be. Yeah, okay. I'm going to get a new cotter pin for that before I put the screw on. All right, let's get our vacuum lines reconnected. This is constant vacuum, so this goes back to the uh, transmission, this constant vacuum source. This is the vacuum for my PCV valve, and this is the vacuum for the distributor that's ported vacuum. In other words, you shouldn't have vacuum on that ported vacuum port at idle. It should give you vacuum once you start, excel, uh, the throttle plate starts over when you get into uh, start getting into slow speed, you get above, let's say you get close to, I don't know, 1,000 RPM, that's what you should go, well, I'm guessing, and I ought not to say, so, but, I'm going to guess around 1,000 RPM, uh, I'm sure there's people that know a whole lot better, they know the specs much better, and they, uh, they can tell you, when they do, when they actually curve, the carburetor, I mean the distributor, when the uh, vacuum kicks in and then when the mechanicals kick in. Okay, and don't forget the electric choke wire. There we go. Alright, see my choke is already closed because I've messed with it. Now I need to get me a new cotter pin. I don't want to reuse that old one. So I 
I'll put it right here. I'm going to take it over there and make sure I match it for the correct size. Should be enough in there. Let's see what it does. We're going to start him up. Usually, on cold start, this thing cranks right up. So we'll see if it's affecting cold start. Of course, the main reason why I'm doing this is to try to improve my hot start, restart.
we've done is, it's a Edinburgh Nine nine two six six carburetor insulator, and uh, the sole purpose of installing that on, directly on the manifold is to try to insulate the heat from the carburetor on shutdown. You know, when you shut these engines down, uh, no fans are running. Of course, uh, they all get a little hotter just sitting there before they start to cool, and uh, that heat's transferred up into the carburetor. And in my case, I'm thinking it's boiling the fuel in the fuel flow bowls and causing them to boil out via the vent tubes into the venturi, which is making the fuel air mixture too rich on restart when the engine is hot. And let's say I go drive somewhere and I pull in to, to fill up with gas, or I want to go in and get me a, a Coke, or, a, um, uh, or I go, well, anywhere go to a parts store you know five minutes ten minutes however long you're in there it would be where I'd have a problem getting it restarted not much of a problem I just have to go to full throttle uh, to open up the throttle plate fully in order to get as much air as possible to, to lean out that extremely rich fuel mixture and it will start every time so that's good maybe that'll make it better I don't know we'll see so thanks for watching What you doing, my girl?